The Anchormate M5C is a second generation printer that has a build volume of 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters, matching the most popular printers out there on the market like the infamous Ender 3. If you've tried spending more time tinkering than printing, this might just be the printer you've been waiting for. But for $399, you get a ton of extra features, including greater reliability, but most notably much greater speed, auto bed leveling, an app that controls the printer from remote that connects to Wi-Fi natively, something that those lower 200-ish dollar printers don't have, which is why this printer really represents the best value for your money. For the majority of people, this is gonna pay to unlock and avoid some of the frustrations of the more budget-friendly printers. 3D printing is a technology that up until now was only for those that had a little bit of a budget of money, but a lot of budget for time because learning how to 3D print, service the machine, do all of the work and calibrations and tuning in order to get reliable, beautiful prints was either a lot of work or very expensive. And now with this next generation of 3D printers, the Anchormate M5C is a second generation printer, but it tries to give you a first generation price at only $399. This is my 10th 3D printer that I've owned. I've owned five Creality's, multiple Ender 3's, four Prusa printers, the MK series, and the Prusa Mini. And while those were game-changing leapfrog machines as far as reliability, the Anchormate is just as reliable. In fact, I would say a little bit more reliable. It has the same build size as the MK3 Prusa, and it can print much, much much faster because of that second gen and also is pretty dang quiet. So if you do have a budget for $400, this is where you wanna be. All right, let's dive in. First things first, this 3D printer setup is an absolute breeze. Believe me, I've assembled my fair share of 3D printers and the Anchor Make takes the cake. With just 12 screws and three connectors, it's a walk in the park. And the best part, there's no manual leveling required. It does it all for you. 49 points of auto leveling checking that it's going to do no complex assembly process that feels like trying to decipher an alien language just simple straightforward setup printing is now going to fall into three categories what type of a print user are you if you have 200 dollars or less you're going to want to get the best ender 3 or soval that you can afford direct drive is a plus but with 200 dollars budget you're probably not going to be able to get that option but you can always add it later as an upgrade you don't need direct drive to make lots of nice PLA prints, which is the hard plastic that most people are gonna start off with and it's easy to print. You are gonna have to devote more time, probably between 10 and 40 hours per year, depending on how much you print, in order to keep the printer level calibrated and running well. But if you happen to have $400, you can buy this machine and all of that extra work goes away because it does auto leveling for you. It has many more advanced features that are gonna make the print process faster because the longer time it takes you to print, the more chances that something can go wrong. So printing speed is not just about convenience, it's about reducing the time that you can have a power outage, a power flicker in the middle of a storm, all of those things go away. And it's actually quiet. Now, is it the best printer on the market, that's debatable because now that the Bamboo series of printers is out there, those are easily gonna take the top spot for most people, but the P1P, which is their most affordable printer, is $200 more than this at $600. And if you want all the full functionality of multicolor printing for the Bamboo Labs, you're gonna need to spend closer to $1,500. And so that's a different bracket of user. There is no screen on this, but you know what? I've been using the app to control my Bamboo Labs printer for quite some time, so I was already used to not using a screen, so I didn't really miss it much. The money that they would have spent on that screen, making it five or $600, they've just omitted that, let you control everything through the app and reduce the price. Check out all of these different prints. I did them all on the Anchor Mate. Anchor also sells this really beautiful matte navy color. And as soon as I saw it, I knew it was time to print me some transformers. Check out this sound wave. You know this one that you can buy that's very similar is $270. I printed this all out for maybe what, $2 worth of filament cost? Unbelievable. And it's gonna fit beautifully here on my shelf. Now let's talk about the features. This printer, 
boasts a remarkable level of quietness, which is a welcome change from the usual symphony of mechanical noises. The construction quality is on a whole new level and it's surprisingly fast. We're talking next gen printing speeds here and the icing on the cake, an easy to use app that lets you control everything from your PC or phone. Now, I know some of you might be wondering about the USB-C connection. Is it a good or bad call? Well, it's actually a great addition. It's fast, reliable, and in line with modern tech standards. Plus, it's one less thing to worry about when it comes to connectivity. And don't even get me started on the toolkit it comes with. This printer is practically holding your hand through the entire process. Now let's talk speed. This printer is several times faster than the previous generation of printers. I mean, imagine turning out a near perfect Benchy in just 17 minutes. It's mind boggling. And the design is a work of art. The Anchor Make takes the traditional bed slinger design and elevates it to a whole new level. The entire body is enclosed, giving it a sleek professional look. Not only does it make it look fantastic on your shelf, but it also keeps those pesky 3D print shapes from clogging up your gears and rails. The precision machine aluminum rail adds to the printer stability and precision, which is crucial for high quality prints. Sure, it doesn't have a standalone screen, but trust me, the app more than makes up for it. The auto leveling is a game changer here. With 49 points of auto leveling system, the accuracy is guaranteed and you won't have to waste time tweaking it yourself. This feature alone can be the deciding factor for many folks who may have been hesitant to dive into 3D printing. Now, you might be wondering about reliability. While long-term reliability remains to be seen, I've put this printer through its paces from a 30-hour torture test to a nearly 60-part figure print. It held its own impressively. Sure, there was a minor hiccup, but I'm willing to cut it some slack considering the intense print I was tackling, and most of the issues that I did have were due to me not orient orientating the prints properly on some that needed supports. That's part of the journey of 3D printing, not just learning your machine, but learning the slicer settings and how to orientate the parts on the bed. Now, availability has always been a challenge when it comes to getting the best printers. Anchor has tackled this issue head on by making their printer easily accessible on Amazon Prime. No more sending your hard earned money to an unknown website or waiting weeks for shipping from across the globe. So is the anchor mate's worth it absolutely sure you could go for a cheaper option like the ender 3 v2 but the anchor mate gives you the luxury of starting your printing journey right out of the box no more spending hours recalibrating after every few prints the higher cost translates to more time spent printing cool parts and less time fiddling with your printer in my opinion this printer easily matches up to my tried and true Prusa MK, yet it costs less than half the price. If you're curious of another next-gen contender, stay tuned for my review of the Bamboo Labs P1P, which really does give it a run for its money and in some ways is better, but also cost you $200 more. This is the Razor Crest from the Mandalorian TV show from Fab365. I'll leave the link to any of these files below, but this one is one that you can print out in sections and then it snaps together. I left a few pieces off like the doors that they have that can go on there and everything just fits in either snapping together or with a little bit of glue. These even can move in and out. So they're known for a lot of pieces. There's a door that you can put here, but look at the detail of any of this. If you printed this in another color, you would be able to see all of these little lines even more, but just look how beautiful this thing is. This is with Anchors PLA Plus white material, and it just looks fantastic. Look at all the little details in here and everything printed perfectly. Here is Soundwave. This is a fully articulating figure, figure that you printed. I'll leave the website that you can download this set of files for free. And it's really nice. This one is about 50 or 60 files, but it tells you exactly what color to print each piece from. So it tells you that all of these pieces are gonna be dark blue. All these pieces are gonna be white. This is gonna be light blue yellow, red, and then you just put it together with the really detailed instructions. So this is super posable. You can actually purchase a figure that looks very similar to this and it's $270. And I was able to print this entire thing for like maybe $2 worth of filament cost. The real secret to this 
is Anchor's Matte Navy PLA. Look how beautiful that is. This is not painted, guys. This is printed on the Anchor Make. Look how it's, you can barely see any layer lines right here. And it really gives you a nice representation. Here's the original G1 figure right here. Uh, you can put it next to it for size, so it's just slightly taller. And man, it looks exactly how Soundwave did on the cartoon. There is even a tiny little laser beak that you can print out as well. And it will go inside of his chest because the little cassette door even opens, which is really cool. Here's an Optimus Prime from that same series, fully articulated and has options for the gun, the ax, and the same thing. Blue is that matte navy, you can tell. I think I'm gonna try to find some matte red. This was just a generic red PLA that I had, but the matte really makes it. Here is a figure from the latest Rise of the Beast series right there, and this one's made to look more like the Bayverse. Here's a world's smallest uh, G1. So you can see the colors actually match almost perfectly right there, fantastic. And uh, if you look online, uh, a figure like this is also about 200 bucks plus. Uh, yes, you can tell in some little parts, if you look really carefully at the light blue, you can kind of see a little bit of layer lines, but it's very minimal. And on a shelf next to a bunch of other Transformers, this is just gonna look perfect. You know, you just see this cartoon representation of Optimus Prime from across the room and you just, your eye is just immediately drawn to it. So as I started looking for something to redecorate my office with, I thought about spending a few thousand dollars getting all of the G1 Transformers, but it's just kind of crazy to do that where I could do uh, all of these for like 20 bucks worth of filament for like the whole cast it even opens up I didn't print out the little matrix that goes in there, but you can do that as well I mean the articulation and the features it even has his little backpack that's shown on the g1 episode where he flies I mean, it's just fantastic and if you really look in there he has light blue eyes as well i mean the directions on how to print this are so easy and um maybe if anyone's interested i did learn a few things printing a lot of these figures i can do a tutorial on how to assemble them and how to glue them together because i did discover a few tips that made things a lot easier for me i do cover a lot of drones on this channel and this is a tpu test this is saint smart which is the tpu that we typically use a lot for printing drone materials and you can see that the tree supports just come off in like one piece so easily. Uh, minimal stream, it's really a beautiful print. This one I printed out on my Bamboo Labs. I would say they're really, really close. Maybe this one is like two or 3% cleaner, but this is definitely usable out of the box with the default TPU settings. Very nice, I would fly this, no problem. Now, I did not do a test with PC TPE. This is a nylon blend with TPE, which makes it extremely strong, but also a little bit flexible. In fact, regular nylon sometimes is too rigid and in a 90 mile an hour head on collision, it will crack or shatter. And that's not what you want. So this is a really nice blend. This, you have to dry it out for 18, 20, 30 hours before you can print it, but it's actually easier to print than TPU because it's not as flexible. So if your printer can print PLA plus well, it'll print this no problem. This was actually done on the Bamboo Labs but uh, I don't have any misgivings about doing this. TPU is the real test and it passed flying colors and the, na the native supports um, actually went really well with being able to unhinge them. Sometimes, I know this one I had to work a lot harder to get those supports off. So out of the box, TPU settings with supports work really nicely. What do you think in the comments, guys? If you were to get a new printer, are you going here? Are you spending a little bit more for the bamboo? Are you spending a little bit less for an Ender 3? I personally have spent those dozens of hours trying to get a working printer working again because it needed calibration, it needed bed leveling, it needed something fixed, and it's just mad and 
happening. You know, if you don't have the patience or the time to do that, pay to unlock, spend a little bit more, spend $400 instead of $200. And trust me, that time that you will have spent given back to you and you can be a printer. You know, once upon a time ago, Anybody that wanted to drive a car had to know how to work on it, service it. They had to be their own mechanic in the very first automobiles that came out like 100 years ago. But now, guess what, guys? You can drive a car without having to know that. And up until now, 3D printing has been very much the same. You had to know how to work on it. You had to know how to service it. You had to know how to do a lot of things. Now, you still may run into the occasional hiccup, but the documentation on how to diagnose and fix things on these new generation of printers is so much better. And they're so much more reliable that the frequency you're going to have to do any of those repairs or calibrations is so much rarer because the auto calibrations that they have built in are just so good thanks guys